Hey everybody, happy Wellness Wednesday. This is Marco Rodriguez coming at you from Transformations Rehab Services in El Paso, Texas. I am so excited to be here today and have the opportunity to interview my good friend and fellow biohacker, Lori Miranda. She is an entrepreneur and a mother of three. Thank you so much for being here. Hi everyone, I'm so excited for Wellness Wednesday and thank you Marco for allowing me to share my story with your audience. Absolutely. So since this is Autism Awareness Month, I thought it'd be a really good idea to interview someone with firsthand experience on what it's like to actually raise a child with autism and why she's so excited now about all of the new medical discoveries that we've come across that associated with NRF1 and NRF2 activation. Now, Laura, you and I have been friends for a couple years now, and, and you have a remarkable story. Would you please share with us what your experiences have been over these past few years? Of course. Well, our journey began when my oldest son, Anthony, was diagnosed with autism at the age of two, and his pediatrician basically told us that there was nothing that we could do for him except put him in speech and occupational therapy. Um, as a mother, I refused that, that I refused to accept that, and I began to research. I found out that there was alternative treatments, so me and my husband spent thousands of dollars on alternative treatments. Uh, we, we did biomedical treatments, we did detox protocols, and we saw good improvements with him. And so what were the results? Well. As a mother, any improvement is a great improvement, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he, he gained a little bit of language. He still had a very limited vocabulary, but he gained eye contact and he was also beginning to potty train. That's great news. Unfortunately, our doctor in El Paso was unfamiliar with these protocols and advised against them. So I'm not a medical professional, so we, we took him off of the protocol. And what happened? He regressed. He, um, he lost his eye contact. The little speech that he had gained, he completely lost all forms of communication. Um, and he began wetting the bed at night again. All of this happened after you stopped the detox protocol. Yes. But before the detox protocol, he, was, he had been making progress. Yes, he began, he began making progress once we started the detox protocol. Wow, so that was how long ago? That was a couple years ago. Okay, and what's happened to you all in the last year or so? Well, fast forward a couple of years, we had him on, we were trying the gluten-free, casein-free diet. That seemed to help a bit, which the doctor approved of. Uh, but recently, we were introduced by Marco and Diane, uh, NERF 1 and NERF 2, and I am... I'm so grateful to God. I always give the glory to God first, mm -hmm. and I believe that that God brought brought this into our lives for a reason. And what's happened with Anthony? I'm sorry, I always cry when I think of him. Um, he began engaging in communication with other people. Um, He's beginning to show me humor. He's recalling things. He's recalling his days. He can tell me how his day went at school. He can name his friends. Um, he sings the song Despacito. <laughs> <laughs> he loves that song. He's so funny. Um, he's even telling me that he, when he grows up, he wants to open a taco truck. So who <laughs> knew we had an entrepreneur? Like it mother, like, just, like son, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I'm That's getting great. to know my son at 11 years old now. I'm getting to know That's him. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, and what, if, if you could say anything to the parents, uh, to our audience out there, what, what message would you have for them? Don't stop. Don't stop looking for, for an answer for your kids. Don't stop looking for, I don't want to say a cure, but... Don't stop, just don't give up. And I would definitely recommend to look into NERF, NERF 2 activation and see how their, their bodies, they have a mitochondrial dysfunction and how NERF 1 and NERF 2 can help, help them with their bodies and so that can help them help their body recover. And, and, and what you're referring to there is that, and I don't know if our audience knows that, 
So there have been a lot of studies on autism, and what they're finding is that persons uh, diagnosed with autism have several things in common. Uh, one of them is poor gut health. The other one is mitochondrial dysfunction. The next one is uh, high levels of oxidative stress. In fact, you had mentioned that Anthony had, uh, at, at, had the oxidative stress levels of what? Like 46 year old. He had the oxidative, he, and how old is he? At that time, I believe he was four years old. So he was four years old and he had the oxidative stress levels of a 46, 46 year old man, right? That's unbelievable. Now, if a 46 year old man shouldn't have the oxidative stress levels of a 46 year old man, much less a small child. Um, so high levels of oxidative stress are certainly a big factor in persons with autism. Uh, we, they also tend to have very low glutathione. Um, and, and of course, all of that equates to having uh, inflammation in the brain. And so uh, what we found is all the research uh, points out to NRF1 is clinically proven to boost mitochondrial biogenesis. Uh, NRF2 is clinically proven to reduce oxidative stress levels up to 70% in four months. That's unbelievable. In fact, I remember uh, John Quinones, his, uh, he did an ABC prime time where his oxidative stress levels came down by 45% in less than two weeks. A couple weeks ago, I interviewed a gentleman, a friend of mine who's 62 years old and now has the oxidative stress levels or the cell age consistent with a, with a teenager of 14.9 years of age. Uh, so certainly I'm looking forward to seeing how much more Anthony's gonna continue to progress Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to Thank be with you. us. And guys, this is Marco Rodriguez coming at you again. Happy Wellness Wednesday. And as I always like to end with, remember, there is a better way to live. Thank you. Helen Hansel was able to win any competition she took part in. She was known as the contest queen because she had won seven trips to Paris, boats, houses. She would basically take part in any sweepstake she read about, any contest, and she would just win. That made my documentary crew, and I asked Helen, how do you do that? And she spoke about this thing called the Silva Technique. Helen, you see, was Jose Silva's former PR manager. She had the benefit of learning